Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to Creature Caster. Today we paint another resin miniature with cuttlefish colors. We are painting Drelgoth, a demon bruiser, and we paint the skin, the skulls, and the glowing axe and turn it into this. This was a really fun project and I hope you enjoy watching the video as much as I enjoyed painting this mini. We start with genital underpainting or black and white value sketching because cuttlefish colors are pre-glazed paints and they paint really well over genital or light colored primer. We started with the mountain which is a sketch paint meaning it's a bit more opaque than the glaze paints and then we finish off with white knight painting it in a couple of passes over the top areas of the mini. Now we paint Comrade Red over the Zenithal underpainting. Cuttlefish colors are very very easy to airbrush. So even though Cuttlefish is divided into sketch paints which are more opaque and glaze paints which has a bit more transparency, both colors, both group of colors has the same consistency or viscosity. So thinning them is the same. You don't need to change your thinning ratio whenever you change colors. Especially yellows and reds, those colors can be thinner with some brands. But with Cuttlefish, it's all the same. The viscosity or the thickness of the paints are all the same. So I simply thin these colors roughly around 3 parts paint and 1 part Merlin's medium. After painting the base color of the red skin, we skip to painting the skulls. Notice that I kinda skipped or there was a jump because I decided to paint the skulls instead of over genital, I decided to paint it over black paint. And I like painting this way because I tend to just leave crevices in between the details and the skulls and paint a dark brown color like Kevin and build up the layering from there. Of course, you could paint the skulls faster. I'm practically doing it the long way because you could paint the skulls faster after the zenithal underpainting and just apply a lot of washes on the white skulls so that you create volume and color depth. But in this way, I kind of like building up the layers by painting dark colors like Kevin and building up, building it up to lighter colors. In this way, I get, I feel I get a bit more volume. And of course, with the number of skulls that is in this miniature, I get to create very sharp definition in between the skulls by leaving black areas in between them. Now we paint with Mummy Dust. This is a nice, very light colored tan and it's perfect for skulls. I'm using this as our pre-highlight color. Key here is to paint textures. Try to apply textures, scratches, a bit of stippling as you paint lighter colors. And of course, you paint less areas or smaller areas as the paints get lighter. Now we paint age bone. This is our highlight color for the bones. And you paint this a little bit more around the bottom area of the axe because we will have reflection from the flaming burning axe later. Now we go back to painting the skin. We're adding this color, this purple shade, to add a bit more shade and contrast and volume to our red skin. I painted this cerulean blue, which is basically a blue-purple color, mostly on the undersides of the skin. I painted this in a couple of passes. After this color, I realized I want darker crevices, so I decided to use charred remains. This is a very dark blue color, and we use it to define or add more contrast to the skin. I loosely painted the charred remains over recess area especially to create more definition with the muscles of this demon. 
After applying a couple of passes or coats with charred remains, I eventually realized I need to clean it up. Now I'm using sacrificial red. So I'm using this to clean up my painting because I added, I painted too much like shade and I'm painting it over the raised areas of the muscles. This will kind of like blend with the shade at the same time add a bit more red to our red skin. Now painting red or making it pop is a bit tricky because if you use oranges as our highlights, it will kind of look similar to our burning axe later. And if we apply too much highlights like pink, it will eventually, if you do it a bit too much, it will look like a pink demon. So to make our red skin demon skin pop, I decided to use some flesh tones. I decided to use or paint flesh tones on the chest part and the belly and other parts of the model. Usually people use oranges or even pinks or magenta for highlighting red. But you could see in this video that using flesh tones will actually give it a more organic feel and it will make the red skin pop. So as you can see in the video, other than the usual oranges, yellows, or even pinks in highlighting reds, skin flesh tones are really good for making red skin pop. After painting the skin, the red skin, this demon skin, we now move on to painting the non-metallic metal, which is the axe part. Like I say in my other videos, especially at my channel, I kinda really like painting non-metallic metal. Although I don't really refine it as much as competition pieces because I simply need to move on and paint more miniatures. However, my fab part is skin painting but NMM is a close second. Painting gold NMM is a matter of like focusing on creating a nice underpainting as you paint towards the highlights. Key to painting good NMM, especially tabletop plus quality NMM, is to paint really fine and really nice edge highlights and highlights to your NMM. The base color in this case, the yellow ochre, defines the color of your non-metallic metal. But the balance between the highlights and the shades is what defines a good NMM painting. Now we finish off this model by painting the burning axe. We start with a good underpainting for the axe. You need this underpainting so that you have a very bright and vibrant red color. So once you finish with a couple of passes or even three thin coats of Comrade Red, you'll have a very nice vibrant red. And then once you're finished with the red, you need another painting, another round of underpainting for the yellow paint. The white underpainting for the yellow is very important because you could never like paint yellow opaque enough over the red paint. Now once you have a yellow base, it's a matter of just painting lighter yellows on top of it and painting it in smaller areas until we get to the white part which is the core very hot part of the axe. Now we paint orange reflection over the skulls directly beneath the axe. Like I said earlier in the video, you should have painted more highlights beneath the axe. This will give a nice effect for the orange glazing. Now it's time for our reveal. Now we are done. As you can see with the finished model, the painting of the flesh tones on the chest and belly area and the inner side of the arms and the legs gave the really needed pop for the red skin. Also now it's obvious that I refrain from using oranges and yellows to highlight the red skin is because I want it to look so different than the burning axe. Although not shown in the video, more purple shades and dark blue shades were applied to the skin to give it more contrast and of course more highlights with flesh tones are painted in some areas of the skin. I hope you enjoyed this painting video from Creature Caster. Again, this is Don. That's it, Pansit. 